Hello everyone, uh, it's Jake again. Today I'm going to be making a short video on how to use Autodoc Vena for determining binding affinities of various ligands in some sort of biological molecule. Autodoc Vena is open source and free, so it should be available to anyone who wants to use it, and it's quite fast and a useful program, and I hope you get something out of this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and hope you enjoy. Autodoc Vena is a molecular docking program in the Autodoc family developed by Dr. Oleg Trott at the Scripps Research Institute that allows for the quick determination of the fit of a mo molecule inside the binding site of a receptor. Autodoc Vena has improved accuracy compared to Autodoc 4, their previous version, with a root mean squared deviation of less than 2 kcals per mole for 78% of their benchmarked molecules compared to 49% in, found in Autodoc 4. This program is open source, but has two articles which you should cite if you should use it in your work. In order to use Autodoc Vena, there's two programs you'll need. The first is Autodoc Vena, which is the computational program, which you can find by going to the downloads page on the website. On this page, you'll find download versions for any operating system you should need, and instructions on how to download them. The second program you'll need is Autodoc Tools, which is a GUI program that allows you to analyze and look at your receptors and molecules. In order to download this, you'll need to download the MGL Tools package found on the Autodoc Suite website, which includes a variety of programs such as Python Molecular Viewer, Autodoc Tools, and Vision. In order to download this program, go to the downloads page and download the, the correct version for whatever operating system you're using. Once you have Autodoc tools installed, you'll be able to open the program, which looks like this. Now, to get started, I'll start with an example of trying to determine the fit of serotonin in the 5-HT2A receptor. In order to do this, we can use this website, Protein Data Bank, which has a wide range of receptors and enzymes available for download, which have been determined by crystallography. And we can search for the receptor we're looking for. So in this case, it, we would search for 5-HT2A and see a range of proteins that might be the one we're looking for. In my case, I know this is the correct structure, so we'll go ahead and look at this molecule. And we see here the 5-HT2A receptor, in this case uh, with inverse agonist Prima van Seren um, bound to the active site. But if we don't want this drug bound to the active site, we can go down and look at the specific protein, which in this case is P28223. And we can see all of the crystal structures obtained for this receptor bound with various molecules. So we'll go down and look for the one with serotonin, right here, 7WC4. And this is the receptor and bound molecule we'd like to use. So we can go ahead and click download. And in this case, we'll want the PDB format. Once we have the protein complex downloaded, we'll want to look at it in Autodoc tools. To do this, we'll press file, read molecule, and then navigate to the location of the receptor. Here I have it labeled 7wc4.pdb and we can open it. And now we can visualize what the receptor and ligand combo look like. We might want to have a better idea of where the serotonin molecule is in the receptor. A relatively easy way to do this is to go back to the PDB website where we downloaded the 5-HT2A receptor in complex with serotonin and scroll down to look at all of the various components associated with the crystal structure. Here, we can see that serotonin is part of the crystal structure with the label SRO. So we'll want to look at Autodoc tools for the res residue SRO. So in order to visualize how the serotonin molecule fits inside the, the receptor complex, we can look for the SRO residue by going to the left and opening these two menus to look at all of the residues in this complex. Here, I know that the SRO residue is all the way down at the bottom, labeled SRO1409, 
and we can visualize this molecule using the atomic spheres model by clicking on this circle here. Now we can see the serotonin molecule and how it fits inside the receptor. An important piece of information that we'll need in order to run the calculation is where exactly the active site is in the molecule. We can go up here to the tab that says grid, selecting grid box, and a pop-up window will show up. In order to view the box, we can just click center, center on, on a named atom, and click OK, and we'll see the grid box, which we can move around. The first thing we'll want to do is change the spacing to one angstrom, because this is the scale used for AutoDuck. Now, we'll want to move this box around such that it fits around where the serotonin molecule actually fits. The rule given in the AutoDoc manual is that there should be enough space in this box such that the entire ligand can rotate at 360 degrees. We can give it a little bit more space to have a more exhaustive fit calculation. And so to do this, we'll go ahead and move this box around such that the serotonin molecule is fit inside of the box. So to me, this region looks relatively good in the selection of the active site of the 5-HT2A receptor. And now that we have this region, we'll want to note down all of the various data. So we'll want the number of points in each dimension and the spacing. So that's the X center, the Y center, and the Z center. So I'll write all of this down and we'll keep this information for when we actually run the calculation. The next thing that we'll want to do is actually remove the serotonin molecule from the receptor so that we can use Autodoc Vena to determine where in the receptor site the serotonin best fits. In order to do this, we go down to the residue here on the left once again. We select it by clicking the circle on the left. And then we go to Edit, Delete, Delete Selected Atoms. And we press Continue. And now we have the 5-HT2A receptor with no bound molecule. Now, in order to prepare this receptor for use in Autodoc Vena, we'll need to assign a few things to the atoms in the receptor. The first thing we'll want to do is assign charges, which we can do by pressing Edit, Charges, and Add Coleman Charges. Then we'll want to assign an Autodoc Element field, which we can do by pressing Edit, Atoms, Assign Autodoc for Type. Finally, we'll be able to save the receptor as a PDBQT file. In order to do this, we go to File, Save, Write PDBQT. And one thing to note that before we save this, in order to use it with Autodoc Vena, we need to remove the connect records. So go ahead and click on Connect and press Remove. And now we can rename the file to our receptor, which I have as 5HT2A.pdbqt. We click OK, and the file should be saved. So now we'll need to obtain the PDBQT file for our ligand, which in this case is serotonin. This can be done in a variety of ways and can be done in almost any computational chemistry software. Um, for example, Gauss View or IQMOL, and then what I'm showing here is with Avogadro. It's quite simple. Um, say we just optimized our target ligand. Um, suppose serotonin was some novel uh, molecule and we wanted to see if it fit into the 5-HT2A receptor. We would first optimize it using some DFT method and we obtain the optimized structure. Then we can open the file in Avogadro, go to File, Export, Molecule, and we would just save it as serotonin.pdbqt and it's quite simple. We now have the file ready for Autodoc Vena. So now that we have our ligand and receptor prepared, we're finally ready to use Autodoc Vena to determine the binding affinity of the molecule. To do this, we'll want to use a terminal such as the one I'm using here, Alacrity, or a terminal emulator such as MOBA Xterm, which I talked about in my video on introduction to QChem. And we'll want to navigate to the location of the Vena program. So you can see here, I have the program Vena in this folder that I'm navigated to. I also have these folders, ligands, and receptors, which I've made and placed our two files. 
So if I ls ligands, we can see our serotonin file. And if I ls receptors, we can see the 5-HD2A receptor. So to see all the various commands, we can do vena dash dash help. And it will tell us all of the various arguments we can use to, to run the calculation, such as the receptor, the ligand, um, the exhaustiveness, the number of valuations, the number of CPUs, and much more. So there's two ways we could run Autodoc Vena calculations. The first is directly from the command line, which is more useful if you only have a couple calculations and you don't want to save the details of your calculations. And the second is using a configuration file. The first I'll go over right now should be quite simple. We call Autodoc Vena by doing slash dot slash Vena. And your Vena program might be named something different. Just call whatever Vena um, whatever the program is called in your computer. Then we would do dash dash receptor. And then we would call the receptor, which in this case is dot slash receptors slash 5HT2A dot PBQT. Then we would call the ligand, which is in the directory dot ligands slash serotonin serotonin dot pdbqt then we have to to specify the size and center of the grid box which we determined earlier so you see here we did we call the center of the grid box using dash dash center underscore x which is negative 24 dash dash center underscore y which is negative 14 and dash dash center underscore z, which is 142. Then we want to specify the size of the grid box in angstroms, which we do by doing dash dash size underscore x, which is 20, dash dash size underscore y, which is 18, and dash dash size underscore z, which is 24. We might also want to increase the exhaustiveness of our calculation to improve the accuracy of the results. So to do this, we could do dash dash exhaustiveness. And let's go ahead and set a value of 40. Why not? And let's also increase the number of CPUs by doing dash dash CPU. And for my computer, uh, four would be totally fine. So we'll do four CPUs then theoretically, we should be able to run the calculation and get some results. And you can see that it's running. This calculation is quite quick. So within maybe 15 to 30 seconds, we can get all of our uh, calculations to finished. And you can see here we have the results where the highest, the highest binding affinity confirmation has an affinity of negative 6.6 kcals per mole saying that it is a good, serotonin is a good binder to the 5-HD2A receptor. So the second way we can run a calculation, as I mentioned before, is using a configuration file. It's quite easy to set this up. Um, we would just go ahead and open a text editor. In my case, I'm gonna be using the text editor Genie, but use whatever you like. And on the Autodoc website, they have a template for a configuration file you can use. So here um, they've pre-labeled some information, but we can go ahead and modify this. So our receptor is, as we said before, in the folder receptors, and it's going to be named 5ht2a.pdbqt. Our ligand is in the folder ligands and is named serotonin.pdbqt. And we'll modify the grid box. Um, as before, we have size center negative 24, negative 14, and 142. And we have size 20, 18, and 24. We can put the other uh, variables, um, the other arguments in this configuration file as well. So we'll go ahead and put the exhaustiveness set it to 40 and let's also put the CPUs to 4 
And now we can go ahead and save this configuration file as a dot text. And let's go ahead and put it in the same folder. So we'll name this 5ht2a ser config.txt. So if we look in the folder that we're directed to, we can now see our configuration file. And as before, we run vena from the command line using dot slash vena. Then we specify the configuration file, dash dash config, and the name of the file, 5ht2a dash ser dot dash config dot text. And vena should read all of the configuration settings we set in this text file. So now we should be able to run the calculation and we can see that's running once again and we'll get the results. And so we have a very similar affinity as we calculated before, negative 6.6 kcals per mole, saying that serotonin is a good binder for the 5-HT2A receptor. So now it would be nice to see how Autodoc placed these molecules in the receptor. So if we do an LS, and ls into the ligands, we can see that there's a new file, serotonin.out.pdbqt. We can go ahead and open this file in Autodoc Tools to see how these molecules have been placed inside the ligand. So we're now back in Autodoc Tools. We can open the file that we just created. So it's going to be here in my Autodoc Vena folder, in ligands, serotonin underscore out. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we can see all of the different configurations that the serotonin was placed in the, in the molecule, with model 1 being the lowest energy configuration. Now, it doesn't make so much sense without the ligand, without the receptor. So let's go ahead and add the receptor. Let's read molecule and open the 5-HT2A receptor. And we can see now where it has placed serotonin in the receptor. So if we unview all of the other locations that Autodoc placed the serotonin molecule in, we can see how Autodoc placed the serotonin molecule inside the 5-HT2A receptor. And we can turn on the atomic radii model to see how the molecules fit inside the receptor. And that's it. Uh, I hope this video was in some way helpful. If you happen to have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and subscribe if you want to see more content like this or anything else related to computational chemistry. If you want to see me co cover a different topic, I would be happy to. And look forward to a new video I have coming out about a Python script that I wrote involving Autodoc and Orca. With that, thanks for watching and thanks for your time. I'll see you next time.